You know, I, I know everybody in this room today wants the best for our kids. Uh, we may have different opinions on how to get there. Uh, and I am sure once we make a decision when we vote, we'll all come together and do the best thing for our kids, regardless of which direction we go in. I want to talk a little bit about the workforce. I'm general manager of Regal Marine. We build luxury performance boats. We are very proud of our product. We have won six J.D. Power Awards. And if you're around me long enough, you'll hear me mention that two or three times. <laughs> We're very proud of our workforce. You know, I, if, if you come to visit me, uh, one of the first things I'll do is take you out on the floor. I'll show you our product, and I'll brag on the people we have there. Uh, and boy, we've come through a lot. It was uh, a little over 10 years ago that uh, the state of Georgia and the community convinced Regal to come up and open up a boat plant here. Now, one of the reasons that we came up here is because the wages were low. You know, and that's, unfortunately, that's one of the reasons that businesses will come into this town. But you know what? The communities with the, higher, with the highest levels of education, those are the richest communities. But let me ask you this, what comes first, chicken and egg? You know, it, does education come first? Or does, do you get rich first? I would say education comes first. And if you don't have an egg, I mean, if you don't have a chicken, eggs are hard to come by. Now, uh, and, and just a little bit about my experience at Regal. Uh, when I, well, after I've been here for a few years, around uh, 2000, late 2007, early 2000, well, really, Let's just say 2007. Our average wage at Regal was about 15 bucks an hour. Now, for a lot of people in their communities, they give their high teeth for a 15 dollar an hour job. We would, at one point, we were trying to hire 42 people. We had uh, uh, ads in the paper, and when I would uh, walk into our lobby in the morning, it reminded me of a doctor's office. There was people in there with their children. There was dad with their their sons telling me that if you give him a job, I'll make sure he gets to work. Um, it was very difficult to find qualified people. Now, there was plenty of people, but they weren't qualified. And, and I'll give you an example of the way people get lost along the way. We had an employee that we hired who was displaced by Katrina. She had two little boys. And their dad, their stepdad would pick them up at school and come and wait 20 or 30 minutes for their mom to get off work. And they would be playing right out in front of my office in a common area there. Well, I had people coming to me saying, hey, you can't let those kids play out there because they're going to get hurt. You know, and then we're going to be responsible. And I'm like, give me a break. These kids have been cooped up at school all day long. You expect them to sit in that hot car? Well, I started thinking about it. You know, if they were at my house, or if my, my wife was around, she'd have those kids doing homework. So I asked their mom, I said, is it okay if they come in my office and start on their homework, and if I get a chance, you know, when I can, I'll come in and get my hand. Well, with the oldest little boy, with the oldest boy, he was in the fifth grade at the time, we read a book together called The Traveler's Gift. And uh, when I talked to their mom, their mom says, you know, I'm just very concerned. I just hope they pass. You know, my, my biggest hope is just that they pass to the next grade. Well, when we started reading that book, me and the fifth grader, Lord, and he was smarter than I was. You know, I, I, I pride myself in being able to pick out the, the high points of the book and get the, the gist of it. But he, he got the gist of it. He got all the names. And I thought, and she's, a, she's worried that he's going to pass. But now the youngest one was in the second grade. And he had difficulty reading. So after uh, spent you know the first couple months with the older one for the most part, but then we started working with the young one together. We tag team and uh, started coming up. We read several uh, storybooks together. We came up around Christmas, and we uh, I got him this book. It was kind of hard. And I said, if you can finish this book without missing a word, then I'm going to make you your family's hero. 
So we're reading that book and, and we're going through it. I have him start at the beginning and, and go all the way as far as he could. And he would miss words. He'd look at me and say, Mr. Greg, it's just too hard for me. I said, no, we're going to stick with this. We're, we're going to do this. So we read. And we, we read. And it came down to the last day before Christmas shut down. He's reading that book. He gets right to the last two pages. And I'm telling you, there were some hard words in that book. And I thought, he's never going to make it. But you know what? He did. He read all the way through that book and didn't miss a word. You know, all those people that were complaining about him in the front yard, we were all in there partying, high five. You know, it was great. But you know, here's the problem with our community. We're divided. We don't have a single focus on education. I work uh, with work ready, I was work ready team leader, I do a lot of work with workforce development. Dr. Casey's been great, people have been great, but from my perspective, it's been difficult to get into the county schools. Uh, and, and vice versa on different things. But it, it's, at times it's overwhelming. But you know, those two little boys were, were getting lost. Their mama was hoping they would pass. Without the focus that, that they needed, and it's not that she didn't love them, she loved them very much, but they get lost. Just like all of those people coming to Regal looking for a job with all the potential in the world to make good money, to be able to provide for their family, but somewhere in our community, too many of them are getting lost. So, and not, not to say anything about the competition that we have in, in other states, but you look at other nations and where we stand as a nation compared to other industrialized nations, we are falling behind. So, you know, yes, we do have a problem. Is the status quo good enough? Lord have mercy, no. Too many kids are getting lost along the way. Can we make a difference? We can if we have a single focus on education. And even if we vote no, let this be a wake-up call. Let us come together with, with, and, and have a common vision for our community and work together and do the right thing for our kids. Thank you.